Europe affects us in our everyday lives now in Europeans. This is the making of a European documentary. The two directors, one Greek, the other German, are in Crete to investigate the secrets of the Minoan civilization, considered by some archaeologists to be Europe's first. The secret of the snake goddess is an archaeological detective story that will soon be on European screens. It's a Greco-German-Canadian co-production. It also gets support from the EU's media program and the Greek state television project, History Doc. Audiences have had their appetites for facts sharpened by recent documentary hits and the demand is there to reward ambitious productions. I think especially after 9-11 in all of Europe but in Greece also people are really interested in, in, in what is happening around us and in our past and they're trying to make sense of, of both our history and what's happening today. Now everyone can think of the Al Gore opus, Super Size Me or a Michael Moore movie that have filled cinemas worldwide. But what about European hits? Gathered in Athens this month were some of the European industry's leading professionals to chew this over. It was organized by History Doc and Europe's documentary network, the EDN, which Lena Pasanen runs. Documentaries are being extremely successful in certain cases in cinema release, for example. In many ways, one could say that documentaries have never been doing better. At the same time, what is happening in many television companies, many public broadcasting companies, it's a little bit alarming. Um, we can see that in some cases um, documentary slots are put down and the idea is to reach bigger audience with other type of, of programming. Señor Allende. Señor Allende. It's difficult to survive without state television playing a role, with few exceptions. Salvador Allende won the documentary Honours at Cannes in 2004. It was directed by Chilean Patricio Guzman and was a French, Spanish, Belgian, German and Mexican co-production. Its producer was French. Jacques Bidou maintains documentary filmmakers have a thin time of it on the silver screen. There was a decade between the 1990s and 2000, or 1987 and 2000, a golden age, if you like. Documentaries had reclaimed all their past glories and more. They were on bookers and programmers' schedules, they became prime time, box office, but they also became product. The studios ran scared of originality or risk-taking and preferred the safety of reproducing to producing. Invention was killed off. Documentaries became formulaic as the television companies sought to keep their audiences tuning in with familiar formats. So they all ended up looking the same and the original voices disappeared. The Angel Makers is a first film from a Dutch director, Astrid Busink, who refuses to give up. It's a journey to a Hungarian village which at the beginning of the last century became known for harboring a serial killer of worthless husbands. This surprising film has won many prizes. <laughs> The director of Greek national television is a passionate defender of original state television documentaries. But it all depends on one thing, he says. The only way to have uh, uh, documentaries in a high quality in a cost of approximately f from 250,000 euros until 300,000 uh, uh, euros is to co-produce and uh, to, uh, uh, to provide uh, assistance to the independent producers to meet their investors and um, to, to, to have uh, opportunities to share the cost and share the revenues. The Lovers of Axos is a Greco-German co-production that will soon be on television in both countries. Selling documentaries is Gita Hansen's game. To sell on the international market, she says the subjects must be able to cross borders as easily as she does when presenting them. Many countries go back to their backyards. They are not so interested in 
in um, what is happening in the building next door anymore as they maybe used to be. Um, so selling documentaries really request that it's not too local the subject in the film. Um, so if you ask me what sells well it's it's universal themes as well I mean love hate uh, ambition we sell a film called the monastery that uh, won several of the major international prizes for documentary films it's an old man dreaming to create his own monastery it's a Danish film and um, when the nuns comes and it's happening a relationship starts between him and the nun and that's very Universal. Men hvad så med kærligheden, vi? Kærligheden? Det ved jeg ikke. Kan jeg ikke noget. Det er jo det er bare et ord. And this... For director Angelos Abbezoglu, following a successful format is not indispensable for a film to be successful even if the audience has to be given some keys to understanding the more challenging works. His most recent movie looks at the political and cultural impact of the post-war reconstruction Marshall Plan on Greece, the first nation to benefit from such an experiment. We know the Greek islands or the Acropolis and the Greek antiquities. We know about the sunshine and tourism. But beyond that there's history, there's Greece. We don't really know what happened after the Second World War. I think that's exactly why we need to make these co-productions. To give one European public a chance to meet another European public. And to understand each other. To understand, for example, how Finnish television can show at prime time a documentary with no narrative or even a silent film when no other channel would even think about it. Europe promotes vast cultural diversity, and that's what I've been picking up since the EU really came into being. Via cinema and documentaries, we're engaging in cultural exchange, and it's proving to be an incredibly enriching experience.